LinkedIn just laid off nearly 700 employees. Qualcomm is planning to cut more than 1,200 jobs. Google, Amazon, and Snap are among the companies continuing to downsize. 2024 is off to a brutal start, which means more layoffs could come. According to layoffs.fyi, there has been 80,628 people who have been laid off in this year alone in the technology industry. The job market in tech is an absolute dumpster fire right now, which is why in today's video, we're going to cover 10 actionable steps that you can take to stand out and increase your chances of securing and passing your next round of data science interviews. The key is to be proactive and strategic in your job search so that you don't waste precious time doing things that don't actually matter that much. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Maggie. I recently quit my six-figure data scientist job in tech to pursue entrepreneurship full-time and help more people break into data science. I share tech, data, and career content daily on my Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Medium. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know in the comment below why you're interested in career in data. And let's start with tip number one. Prioritize networking and leverage your professional network. Research has shown that you are four times more likely to get hired through your own network compared to simply applying online. Networking not only allows you to meet interesting people that can add value to your career, but also open yourselves up to opportunities that you may not have access to otherwise. Plus, it also helps with building communication and interpersonal skills. Did you know that some recent estimates suggest that 70% of all jobs are not publicly available online? And even for jobs that are posted publicly, anecdotally, I know that a lot of those are filled through referrals or internal candidates as well. So reach out to your former colleagues, classmates, industry contacts to let them know that you're looking for your next job and ask if they have any leads or can make any introductions for you. You'd be surprised how far a week tie can take you on your job search journey. Which leads us to tip number two, don't let your connections do the work for you. Here are the two versions of the same message that you can send to an industry contact for job referrals. Which one do you think is more likely to get a response? The first one says, Hi Mark, I am looking for a data scientist role. Please let me know if anything comes up at your company. Thank you, Maggie. And here's the second one. Hi Mark, it was great connecting with you at the data event last month. I am currently looking for my next data scientist role and I came across this posting at your company. I am really interested in how the team is able to leverage machine learning to drive revenue as this aligns well with my expertise and experience. Can you connect me with a hiring manager for this role to discuss more? Thank you, Maggie. I hope it doesn't come as a surprise to you that message number two is more likely to get a response. It reminds the person that you're reaching out to who you are, how you've met in case it was a weak tie, it shows that you're taking an active role in your job search and demonstrate your interest in this role in this specific company. This message also ends with a recommended action that your contact can take so that the heavy lifting doesn't really fall on them. The key is to strike a balance, leveraging your network to gain insights and introductions, but also demonstrate that you're a self-starter who is willing to put in the effort and hard work to find your next opportunity. Your contact is likely very busy and you want to remove as much friction as possible for them to introduce you to the right person. Tip number three is developing in-demand skills. In data science, this usually includes sharpening up your skills in SQL, Python, machine learning, and cloud computing. There are new methodologies and packages popping up every single day and companies are adopting a skill-first hiring approach. So invest in growing your skills in areas like artificial intelligence or machine learning can really help you in the long run for a career in tech. I know looking for a job and preparing for interviews can be a full-time job on its own sometimes, but the advancement of technology does not stop and you want to show the hiring manager that you're genuinely interested in keeping up with the industry and prioritize constant upskilling and learning. The next thing you can do to increase your chance of securing a data science interview, especially if you don't have a lot of relevant experience, is to build a data science portfolio. This applies to not only data science jobs, but also software engineering, UI, UX design. The principle behind this is that you want to give the hiring manager a reason to learn more about your experience and your expertise by showcasing to them what you can do with projects. Your portfolio projects should be a clickable hyperlink that is somewhere on the top of your resume. And remember, each of your projects probably will only get a few seconds of attention from a hiring manager, if at all, if they do decide to click on your link. 
As a result, it's really important to have an abstract at the beginning of each project that summarizes the data that you used, the background of the story, methodology, results, and actionable next steps. And most importantly, your projects should tell a story with visualization components in it. Tip number five is to prepare for your technical interviews early. It is very common to have live coding interviews for data science physicians. This can be in Python or SQL, depending on if you're looking for more of a machine learning algorithm heavy role, or if you're looking for more of A-B testing or product data scientist role. And trust me when I say this, you want to carve out at least one month ahead of time where you get to practice SQL or Python every day because by the time your interviews are starting to roll in, there just simply is enough time or energy that you can dedicate to coding. And your coding round is not supposed to be a hard round. It's only there to eliminate people who say on their resume they know how to use Python and SQL, but in real life, they've never touched them before. And I deeply believe that nobody should fail the coding round because all you need to do is practice to be able to pass. Practice, practice, practice. My favorite site for practicing coding in Python is LeetCode, and my favorite site for practice in SQL is HackerRank. Tip number six is to have specialized resume templates. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I don't believe in writing cover letters. I don't think anybody reads them. I don't think anybody should write them. And I also don't think you should tailor your resume to each job postings just because there isn't enough time and applying for jobs is down to a numbers game. Rather than tailoring a resume or writing a cover letter to each job that you're applying to, consider having three to five versions of your resume that cover specialized areas in data science. For example, you can have versions of a resume that focus heavily on NLP experience and projects. So the next time you see a role that Folks heavily on NLP, you can just use this version of the resume directly without changing anything. Tip number seven is to research companies and your interviewers. By this, I don't just mean to read your job description, go on the company's website, and check out their social media pages. For data science roles, you're going to want to check if the company has an engineering blog where they post how they use their technical skills to solve real world problems. You can also find companies' quarterly report or yearly financial report to see where their priorities are at. Having this information set you up for success because you're going to be able to ask very interesting questions to your interviewer at the end of the interview that shows you're prepared and thoughtful. A bonus point is that this information can also be used in your code email when you first reach out to someone on LinkedIn that you have no prior connections to. And the next tip in your job search is to broaden your horizon. The tech industry is not doing so hot right now, but there's still a lot of demand and competition. Even experienced data scientists are being laid off for no fault of their own simply because of economic conditions. So just imagine that you're in the same pool now as those people who have prior experience and are looking for that same role. You want to broaden your search and don't forget that there are a lot more data science roles other than technology industry. There is government, there is nonprofit sector that has a lot of opportunities that often are overlooked and has less competition because of the fact that they're being overlooked. And this leads us to our tip number nine, don't get fixated on job titles. A lot of people have the prejudice towards a data scientist title. But in reality, I've heard people who are data analysts that are doing A-B testing at their day job where some data scientists are still using Excel every day. This is why you you want to make sure that you're doing your research before accepting a role. And data scientists' roles are still not very defined and they're so different in different companies. Data scientists are not really an entry-level job. For example, data analysts and business analysts have traditionally been proven to be a stepping stone to get into a data scientist role. So if this is your first data science job, don't get fixated on data scientist title. Apply to all data analysts, data engineer, BI analyst, business analyst roles, just so you're not limiting yourself to a small pool of job out of everything that's out there. Last but not least, and this is probably the most important tip of it all, is to stay positive and address any feelings of anxiety. In order to perform at your peak level during your interviews, you want to make sure that you're feeling your best and that you're taking care of yourself and your body. Anxiety and stress can negatively impact your job performance. So when you're feeling frustrated, just make sure that you're giving yourself a pat on the back. Allow yourself to take a break from applying to jobs or lean into your support network. Acknowledge that 
looking for a job is hard and it is okay and it will take time and remember there's still so many opportunities available especially outside of major tech hubs remember the key is to be strategic proactive and leverage your network and skills to differentiate yourself if you found this video helpful make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more data science and tech content if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comment box below i'll make sure to read and reply to all of them thank you for watching and best of luck in your job search